Hi everyone, I'm Dora. Thanks for joining us for another video for the Latinx and Kidlet blog where we read banned books. Hi everyone, I'm Sonia. Uh, we'll be talking about Gabby Girl in Pieces by Isabel Quintero, but first we'll talk a little bit about uh, banned books. So the banning and challenging of the books in the U.S. has a long history and unfortunately the recent rise of this is happening in K-12 classrooms across the country and it's not new. Um, many of the books that have been banned and challenged recently center um, BIPOC and or fear experiences, which again, the silencing of marginalized voices in the U.S. is not a new strategy. Um, with these videos, we hope to bring awareness to books and create dialogue. So a little bit about like the differences between like uh, a book that is challenged and a book that is banned. So from uh, the website of the uh, American Library Association, they say that a, a challenge is an attempt to remove or restrict materials based upon the objection of a person or a group. A banning uh, is a removal of these books um, or materials. So challenges do not simply involve a person expressing a point of view, rather they are an attempt to remove materials for the curriculum uh, from the library, from the classroom, like restricting access uh, to these from of these books to like other folks, and right then the banning is like like literally removing these books from these spaces. So we wanted to share quickly some um, like visuals from the Pan American um, survey that they did on banned books, just to give a little bit more context as to like why we're having these conversations uh, on banned books in the Latinx and Kidlit blog, right? Um, and sort of just the importance of it. Uh, Dora, when we first uh, talked about uh, this survey that Pen America released in April of this year, like what were your thoughts or like impressions or just seeing these numbers and um, who was being targeted? Yes, when I when I saw it was when I saw these visuals, because again, I'm a very visual person. Um, it was like we mentioned, it was shocking, but looking at, again, some of the titles and some of the work that others are, other organizations are doing for more visibility of our books, um, it wasn't surprising, right? Um, but it made it very clear that, you know, we have protagonists of color as the majority of books that are banned. And it being recent too, like this, this data is from 2021 to March, 2022. And yeah. I really thought I'm like that's really that's really interesting that it's it's taking flight as the way it is. But what were your thoughts? What stood out to you? I was really impressed by the survey that Pan America put out, just in terms of like uh, detail and their analysis. So we'll put a, a link to their survey like um, in the bottom of the description of this video, so you can uh, spend more time with it. But again, like as we said, right, it, it's it's not happening in, in a vacuum, like um, the books by BIPOC and queer folks uh, being challenged or banned. Um, it's, it's happening in the context of, of our society now, right, in the U.S. and the tensions, the racial tensions that are happening, uh, the, not only racial, right, but also like the attacks on like trans and queer youth, right, and there's so much intersectionality, so it, it's if you're like wondering or if you're like surrounded by people or someone's like, well, why should I care about banned books, right? Like I'm not in a K through 12 classroom, right? I'm an adult, I could read whatever I want. So why should I care about this, right? Um, one of the reasons is, right, that there's like intersections of this, right? At the moment that we start banning um, or challenging like literature, right, books, like it taps into other areas of, of our lives, right? So it's not just the book for, for a book's sake, right? But it's a book. Um, in a child's life that is then connected to like access to like a cultural citizenship, access to healthcare, access um, to like representation. And so it's not ever as simple as just the book. Right. Yeah, and so we could see like, as, as like Doris scrolling through the visuals, right, we can see just some of these, um, these numbers, right? It's, it's a lot of YA, right? It's, it's, it's a lot of um, BIPOC folk, the books that are being uh, banned or challenged. 
I also I find so. interesting yeah. the trend too that you know our authors it's it's not only stories with our protagonists that are representative of our cultures but it's also our authors yeah i'm looking at this this visual right now about the ya ones right this one too um i mean ya as a as a category is um one of the characteristics right is that these young adults are learning their place in society right that they're learning um how to challenge authority or question authority or or, or how to work with authority Right, so much of it is about these tensions with authority for young people, and so banning books, as particularly that center um, youth of color, challenging uh, systems of oppressions, challenging authority, having this like very just human experience of like how do I fit into the society? What is society telling me about power? It's very strategic, right, in terms of wanting to silence and wanting to control um, a people. Right, by not giving them access to how to challenge, by limiting their perspective of whether challenging authority is good or not. So again, banning books is not just, oh, it's a book, <laughs> right? But it's tied to so much, um, to so much of our society. Yeah, I find that fascinating too, that our adult, right, books for adults, it's, it's one of the smaller numbers. Yeah. Versus like our chapter books, right? Those are our middle grade novels, our um, our picture books. Like that in the total number of books that are being banned for all those ages is much more than what's being banned for adults. Yeah, right. It's like the fear of like educating children, right? Because children become adults, <laughs> right? Adults with power. Exactly. So again, strategic. So let's go ahead and talk about... Gabby, a girl in pieces. Mm -hmm. I love Isabel Quintero. This is her, this was her debut novel. Um, I can't remember when it was published. I believe she's celebrating the, the 10th year anniversary of this book. It's oh my God, I, I cannot believe it's been 10 years. I think it was published in 2014. Oh. Um, probably earlier than that, but... Yeah, 2014, like we're about to hit, like it's, it's the eighth, eighth year. I, I remember getting this book and just sort of like being, um, again, mind blown by the structure, the format, um, the topics that are discussed in this book and obs by like Gabby as a character, right? Gabby is, is, is a fat young adult, right? She knows this um she wants to well let's talk a little bit about like what she wants i just also think it's awesome she wants okay back up okay the real gabby beginning i know gabby <laughs> wants to lose her virginity before she goes to college and she's that is just yeah she's senior she's like all right i gotta lose my virginity and i mean that's her goal and i'm like okay girl that is awesome and it's also just kind of hilarious at points uh, I yeah. I love Gabby and I I love that this is uh, Isabel's debut novel. It is actually the first book that I remember being connected to a character, um, just because again she's a senior in high school. Like everything that she goes through, not only with like her family but like her classmates, her friends, just life. And I'm like, wow, that that sounds like each story like resonated with like different like life stories, right? That, you know, either through friends or just in the yeah. communities that I've been in. And it, it just was like so authentic to to her life experience. Um, yeah, so there's- funny. Oh, oh my God, yes. Oh, I so love that Gabby is hilarious. Um, yeah, I could totally relate to that. And she's hilarious in this like, sometimes like darker like, uh sense of she's very sarcastic and it's just i love it um gabby girl in pieces is told um in like diary entries right so you have a date and then you have a story so the voice um is gabby's voice is writing in her diary and her journal uh, and going through her life right so as readers we get this very intimate look intimate like invitation into her life um 
And we also have, um, she likes doing like zines, right? These like mm -hmm. um, DIY like magazines. And so the book itself has her, her zine in the middle of it. This is in the middle of it, it's somewhere in the book, right? That where she talks, starts talking about her, her, um, her body. And so the cover of the book is the cover of her, her zine, which mm -hmm. I totally love. Was there a part uh, for this book that like stood out to you? Um, that you loved? I think I loved how the author really embedded like Gabby's poetry. Oh, yes. Within, yeah, so like part. one, the journal entry, I feel like it's a very like close look at not only like Gabby's thoughts gives us a perspective of like what's going on and getting to know other characters. I've always loved that format, yeah. but I do love how, you know, it was weaved in like poetry from Gabby because she is a writer and she's a poet and how much more we gain like learning about her as a person right not only what she's feeling but how she's you know navigating through again senior year senior year of high school is stressful it's a stressful year yeah. <laughs> I try not to remember it but it's a stressful right there's a lot of you know what's next and I know that's one of Gabby's to like um worries and goals it's like what what happens after high school right how can I keep pursuing my dreams um and I, her poetry stood out to me the most and those are my favorite parts yeah it's it's such a like an amazing uh like you were saying like uh like weaving of like prose and poetry and then just like the format of the diary entries with the inclusion of like a zine um, so I like like that mix of these different structures to tell a story. I thought that was brilliantly told uh, used because also like Gabby doesn't have, I mean, it's, it's not a story about like an easy life, right? It's not just like she's trying to lose her virginity. Let's like follow along with the hijinks of how she's going to get that done, right? But it's also like dealing with um, like drug abuse in the family um dealing with or being witness to like the discrimination and homophobia that like one of her best friends experiences um teen pregnancy from her other best friend which I mean how she gets pregnant is also very shady <laughs> um right um because she's at a party uh, yeah she's at a party and and she describes it as like I was drunk and we had sex and now I'm pregnant, right? Um, and they don't, they don't name it, right, as, as assault. Um, but just, I mean, so much is happening in the lives of, of these young people. And what, what I, again, going back to the formats and the structure, right, is how we can visually see Gabby trying to heal through this. The poetry, as you pointed out, the zines, the diaries, right? How do we heal through so much trauma that we're currently experiencing yeah, I, so I really this is love her that. father like it's not like again like yeah. you said, because of the um drug yeah, abuse drug and abuse. like again adding that to you know again as she's living out this year so this book is is, is on a bent and challenged uh book list um so why do you think it's on a list why what would be something of, of this book of why it's banned and challenged? Oof. Um, I think it's banned and challenged again because of those, like you mentioned, those stories, um, you know, which, which there are stories, right? There's yeah. members of our community that have those stories of where teen pregnancy was, yeah. you know, something that happened or you know it's yeah and it's also the stories of the the drugs and the abuse of that you know we get a glimpse of her father's um yeah. own life experience with that and unfortunately you know she she's grieving that too and there's a lot of mixed feelings so I think again with some of the grief around like the topics of death and teen pregnancy um would be the reason 
one of the yeah. reasons why it's the most yeah, challenged. Yeah. yeah. So just to, I mean, yeah, to clarify, right? The book hasn't been banned, but it's been challenged, yeah. mm -hmm. right? As we said earlier, a challenge, right? It's just an attempt to get it removed, but it hasn't been removed from classes as far as we know. Um, but so much of it, right, as you said, like, is the challenging of, of this idea of like purity, right, of like uh, childhood innocence, right, that children mm -hmm. should not be reading or talking about like sexuality, wanting to lose their virginity, um, teen pregnancy, right, it's definitely the inclusion of a queer character, of a coming out, um, and yeah, definitely like the drug abuse, um, mm -hmm. right, like why would we want children <laughs> exposed to that if they don't have to be? Um, but like I said, I mean, that's, well, it's, well, it's a fictional book. I mean, it's, this could be someone's like story, right? Like any reader right. who's reading this may not have all of these like different um, struggles, but they might know someone that they might be going through something. And then it's just kind of nice to, to always see yourself that experience represented in a book. And I know we've, that's been like a common theme throughout all our, um, oh, our yeah. videos. <laughs> Racism. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Which is true. It's true, but it's also like whose stories are we, I, you know, it, it goes back to whose stories are we valuing? Whose stories are we, you know, as again, our readers have various life experiences and stories and there's various representation um like you said there are readers who will connect with this with this book and with gabby yeah. you know and who she is as gabby. a person and how she grows and and heals throughout this whole year yeah. um you know again throughout not only her relationships with her friends but you know relationship with her with her parents and um I really again when we're when we look at you know what books were challenging and or banning we're thinking about you know again whose stories do we want to include and learn about and who yeah we don't yeah it's a great point um so you've already like touched on this, right? But like, what are some of the things that like can be gained, right? That readers can can gain from this book, right? Is obviously like representation, right? As you said, like any book that can like help a young person like like see themselves, understand what they're going through, right? Is is always like a great book. Um, I put a little asterisk on that, right? But it's important for like like young people to see themselves in books. Um, and I, I, again, I love this book because it brings up so much about um, that, like, I can relate to, right? I, I mean, I was a first generation, like, college student, and um, Gabby talks about that. As, I mean, she, I don't think she names it first generation, right? But some of the experiences of, like, I have to figure out college. Nobody, <laughs> nobody else went to college. I have to figure out these applications. I have to figure out this, like, college essay. I have to figure out all these, like, forms by myself and her mom's not very helpful or very supportive right and and again it's like not knowing how to right and, and Gabby has to figure that out um I also love I mean going back to like the inclusion of of like the zines and the diary entries and the poetry I think one of the ways that I would teach this book in the classroom would be to try to like model that right I, I'm I'm I often include like journaling in all of my classes uh, in relationship to like whatever we're reading or whatever we're studying, right? Trying to make connections. And so journaling would be like a great exercise for a classroom. Um, I've done zines in my classroom. Like if I had students come up with zines, right? And so that would be a great way to teach um, like in, in relationship to uh, Gabby, a girl in pieces, right? To have the students do zines, always writing poetry. Yeah, yeah, I definitely I agree. Using like the po like the poems that are found, Gabby's poems that are found throughout yeah. this text is an excellent way to bring more poetry into the classroom. And so, not only again, I think um, 
I know many readers will connect not only with Gabby, but other of the characters well. They're so developed. They're so well developed in like their own personalities and again, their own life experiences and emotions and their own growth. Um, but I would definitely bring it for that poetry mm -hmm. piece. Yes. That's our zine, right? Like mm -hmm. um, about her body because so much of, of, of the book is about like her coming uh, to expression of her own sexuality and her body and so much of it like her uh, her mom and society telling her and her grandma oh that grandma telling her like what she can and cannot do with her body yeah. right and so a lot of that poetry is in relationship also to um to expression of her body um speaking of of like poetry I mean I just flipped it open and I found like Eric the heartbreaker like one of the poems and he's like he's a fucking cannibal <laughs> The F words are probably yeah, one I, of the reasons why. It's oh, shit. probably one hundred percent. But it's it's the humor that she brings again. You know, because you you get so in like invested in like the emotions that she's going through, and it's just so real. Like, yes, that's probably what how you felt. You probably wouldn't say it out loud, but it's expressed through her poetry, and that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love the art. The the healing through art, right? Healing through writing in, in various forms, right? Again, the diary entry, the poetry and the zine, right? All like things that I could like tell like a youth, like read the book. I mean, do what she does, right? Like, well, in terms of practicing the healing um, through writing, right? Try these different mediums and see like what comes out of, um, out of those struggles, right? Making art out of these struggles. Well, Dora, thank you so much yeah. for talking to me today about Gabby Girl in Pieces by Isabel Quintero. Buy multiple copies of these books for all your people. So excited for the 10-year anniversary. I've already forwarded us to like 2024, um, but I can't believe how long this book has been out in the world. Um, so yeah, buy all the copies. Tell everyone about this book. Thank you so much, everyone. See you You're next time. Fine.